the more fire hacks you know, the better off you're going to be. Be careful with your fire, stay safe, and practice these hacks at home. You saw me collecting those items, and you're probably thinking fire. You're right. Sandwich bag. That's about enough water. Try to get all the air out. And you'll get that kind of a shape. I think in another 10 or 15 minutes we might get a break to pull this off. I got my stuff ready to go. So that's basically the shape you want. You hold on to it like this. Don't twist it until you puncture it. You want this roundish shape and you'll have this point but you're gonna start here and the ray will come out here, see? If you can see that, that's what we want. I'm just waiting for the sun to get a bit better. Just gotta try to get your rays where you want them. Of course I got ants crawling all over me now takes patience Just move it around play with it we're getting smoke there we go I hope the camera's catching this Looks like it's going. Now we gotta feed it. We got our coal. Fire with a sandwich bag. That's a good one. It's probably enough. I'm going to kind of weave it together a little bit. Put it in here. And then basically just short it out. You see the sparks? Use a stick and you can push it together more. Because it gets really hot too. You see the sparks I'm getting? I will get it. Okay, we got her. See that? Don't smother your coal now. Okay, I got my coal pretty big here. And I collected a bit of cedar. I'm gonna put this on the back side. Now we got her. Get that to a spot. <laughs> that took effort, but we got her. Went out. Some dead, rotted stump. Now, if you go back to some of my other videos, this is an important thing to remember. Dry rotted stump you want with bow drill fires where I started the fire with the sandwich bag That's what I got uh, that fire going with anywhere in the world. You should be able to find Dry rotted stump. 
even if it's at the base of a tree where insects or ants, you'll see powder under there that's dry, will work the same way. We got some more dry rotted stump here. I'm gonna collect some of this uh, dry rotted stump here too for my bow drill for later. Let's go and find the bow drill parts. Nice looking bow here. Piece of birch. This has got a nice shape to it though. Nice bend. I think this will do for our drill. might be able to get something for the fireboard hopefully it'd be nice to get this piece there we go you know i don't care what people say i think that is fur but you don't have to use the same wood for your fireboard as your drill this will work just fine. I mix and match woods for uh, bow drills all the time. So more pointy on that side and then a small point and it'll round off on its own. I'll shorten this to birch is strong stuff. That's perfect. Okay, we'll tie our string up. Try to get this fire going, man. It's fairly heavy. That's definitely going to put a lot of pressure on my drill. Drill us a hole. I already cut my notch. Try to keep it straight. There. Okay. See how it all stays by itself? So now I put a piece of bark under here. I forgot to do that, so I just quickly did that. But now I can stand here and just hold this sideways. If I want more pressure, I can lean on it. If the drill is spinning, which means a lot of times that there's too much pressure because it is pretty heavy log, I can lift up a bit. But the whole thing will be a lot easier to maneuver. Okay, we got her. So I got these dry, dead branches at the base of this fir tree. I'll grab a bunch of them. You can usually find dry twigs at the base of a lot of trees. And these usually stay dry even when it's raining if they're at the base of the tree. I got this little Y stick. It's about four inches to the Y. Push that in the ground. And then what I want to do with my branches that I collected is find the smaller ones and tear them off. And when we have a nice little group of them, I'm going to break them in half, like kind of fold them into a V. Then that goes over top to form a teepee kind of. Okay, you see how I've got the bundle fairly close to the ground. It's all held up by the stick with the fork in the ground. But with these little twigs, because they're on an angle, the flame that starts down here is gonna wanna travel up. And then we're just gonna make bigger pieces on top of that little tripod that we've started. And because I have that stick, I can just pile them and they'll all stay together. But you see, they're all pointing up now. 
and there's going to be lots of oxygen that comes in through the bottom and we don't have to worry about it going out because it's smothered or didn't have enough oxygen. I've got some eusnea. And I've got some juniper dead. And basically I'm just going to put the two together, start them this way. We don't want to start the juniper first. The eusnea is going to burn quicker and get this going. And then we're just going to shove it under our bundle. And there you go. So that's probably the most efficient way to get a fire started. Don't forget, if the girls don't find you handsome, they should find you handy. Because it's better to be handy. Uh, you could be with Brad Pitt, and if he can't start a fire, and you both die of hypothermia, you know, what, what good is it being handsome if you can't start a fire, right? It's a pleasure to meet you. I hope you and Ugly here find every happiness together. But you know, ideally, for you uh, young ladies out there, I mean, if Brad Pitt had these skills, and you were out there with him, that'd probably be better. But all I can do is show you the the tricks and techniques when it comes to fire. But I still want to show you this other method that is quite efficient as well. It's more for a camping situation uh, where you have an axe and a saw and cut wood. So I'm going to uh, chop up some kindling and show you the second efficient type fire for uh, camping. The first one's more a survival situation. I didn't need an axe, a saw, or a knife. Just everything that I picked by hand. And, you know, it's funny, to this day, there's a fire pit over here, and somebody tried getting a fire going, without success, obviously, but they're trying to burn green wood. You don't cut and try to burn green wood. Dead, dry wood, that's what you want. But, I mean, you think it should be obvious, but people still do these things. Now basically, I'm just going to build a box. Four bigger ones on the bottom is fine, then I'll go with smaller ones. And then I got one piece. Once I get my tinder down in here, I'm going to use the juniper and use me again. And then I got a piece. I'm just going to cover this, and away it goes. And then what I can do once I get my juniper in here burning, then I can take smaller pieces and I can slide them in, like in between, to keep the fire going once I have it all done. So like once I have this blocked, then I can just feed it from in between the logs. And this, this works really well, this box arrangement get your tinder down in there and this just goes in here and we put our cap on it once it gets going this is a perfect style to get a fire started Oh, got burnt there. It gets lots of oxygen too. As you can see how well it's doing now. Such a good boy, the Finn. He's learned how to bring the firewood. Get the firewood. Good boy. Okay, let's get some more wood. Bring the firewood. Good boy. Bring the firewood. Bring the firewood. One of these days, you're gonna learn to bring it right to me. He needs firewood. Who's on here? We'll get it. Bring it. Bring the firewood. Oh. Good boy, bring it over here though. Can't burn it over there. Bring the firewood pin. 
that the firewood? Oh, don't take the firewood pin. Bring the firewood back. Bring it here, please. We need the firewood. Thank you. Oh, you got some firewood. Oh, what a good firewood catcher. You gotta give it to me, that's the whole thing. You're not listening. Come here, please. I can't burn it if you don't give it to me. He doesn't like to give it back. <laughs> it's firewood. It's firewood. Oh, no, no. You're gonna put the fire out. You wrecked, you put the fire out. You got the firewood. Got a boy. Got the, got the firewood. Oh boy, good boy. You bet. Get the firewood? Good boy. Get the firewood? Careful. Thanks, Ben. Get you a treat. Good boy. Bring it. What a good piece of firewood, Ben. Oh, oh, what a boy. That's a good piece. You betcha. We'll put that there. I think it's bedtime, but thanks. Good firewood catcher. Oh, are you ever. If it wasn't for you, we wouldn't have such a nice fire. You betcha. This is the kind of thing you're going to look for. Now, it's winter here, but, um, you know, rain, snow, whatever the case may be, a dry place is usually under a big tree like this one that's got a lot of needles, a lot of branches. It'll keep the rain and the snow out. Now, Actually, fire is easier to start in the winter when it's cold like this than when it's raining. But even if it's raining, we're going to have dry needles under this tree. And these needles, you see they've got some turpentine in them. They will burn. So, man alive, just make sure you got a lighter. You can't rely on a bow drill if it's raining. The sandwich bag trick, you can't rely on that. If it's cloudy, there's variables. Always take a lighter. Don't plan that you can start a bow drill fire because you've seen some of my videos or somebody else's videos. Don't leave home without a lighter. I chose one that just has spark, doesn't flame. I'm going to show you a couple of ways that we can start a fire with a dead lighter as well. As long as you have even a dead lighter, you can start a fire. Um, it's December and we can still find the little pods on the dog bane. But these are an important thing you can find even in the winter. Dog bane is a pretty common plant. We'll use these seeds to get a fire going. These tricks are important. They could save your life, but don't leave home without a lighter, as I keep emphasizing. Now I've got my dog bane seeds. I'm going to collect a little bit of uh, fine dead dry grass and what I really like for a one spark situation is these dead junipers or any dead needles really if the grass catches these will go up and we go from there build our fire up bigger and bigger the dog bane seeds when they catch are only going to burn for about half a second they go up instantly but it should be enough to start the grass and then start our dead needles of whatever kind we're using Fire is number one survival thing to master if your life's on the line. Master fire, it's important. And I should mention too, I'm going to be using dog bane seeds. Other seeds work. Thistle, uh, Amoni, Dryad, um, Goat's Beard, all these. But what I like about the dog bane, which is a common plant, is the pods stay dry. So even if it's raining, the seeds will be dry inside the dog bane pods. Dead grass, the juniper, and then we're going to work up with sticks. But you know what? It's important to know how to start a fire with a dead lighter that just sparks. So this is an important part of this video. I'm going to make a pocket right here under the tree with these dead needles, and uh, this should go almost immediately. Now if it's windy, you need to protect these seeds. Keep this handy, dead lighter.
So with our second fire, we're going to be using, just with the spark from the lighter, some dead rotted stump. Now this method is more reliable. Now it's more difficult than the dog bane seeds or any seeds, but you might be out at a time of year when there is no seeds. If it's spring, there's no dandelions or uh, clematis or any of the wild seeds that ignite right away. This is a reliable, but a bit more difficult uh, procedure or method. I want to grind it into a powder. You've seen me use this uh, for bow drills, other methods, but seeds are preferable. You've seen it only took uh, two flicks of the lighter. I had that fire instantly. We're going to cover the top of this stump, and then basically I'm going to use this like a running board for the lighter to try to get the powder started into a coal. And then we got something to work with. Fire's number one in survival. And I don't care what anybody says. I know I got a lot of survivalists and preppers that watch my channel. But I beg to argue with anybody. Uh, if it wasn't for fire, I would have been dead six times over by now. But I'm still here doing these videos because of fire. So what I'm going to do with the dead lighter I'm going to take my dry rotted stump and I'm going to fill it up like this, hold it like this, and you'll see that we'll actually get flame even though we don't have uh, butane in it still because the fine dust will actually catch on fire inside the lighter. We fill this up. The dust will be so fine, it's like when they get them fires in the grain elevators just from the dust from the grain. I'll try to show you here that this you'll see little puffs of flame even from the dead lighter. Some of it will fall out, don't worry about that. See we got flame there, we had a flame. See flame. My dry grass now, like I say that powder is so fine shake it up. I'm just going to put our grass here and hopefully it gets enough flame to start the grass. If you don't succeed at first, just keep trying. I didn't see any flame that time. I think this grass might not be fine enough. This grass is a bit finer. Some more powder in. Don't get discouraged if uh, these things don't work right off the hop. You got to, especially if your life's on the line, you can't give up. I know these tricks work, or I wouldn't be showing them to you. It went, see? I'm not going to start a fire this time, but you see? Just that powder, just with spark. You get enough flame. To get your grass going. Man alive, pay attention to these tricks and always carry a lighter. Just another survival fire hack with a dead lighter again. No flame whatsoever. You know the thing is uh, when it comes to fire I always say it's the most important survival thing that you can know or learn. So the more hacks you have the better your chances of starting fires in survival situations. So the more hacks the better. And uh, we're going to show you how to get an instant fire. Mind you, conditions have to be right. It has to be dry. We're going to find some dandelion and some goat's beard or yellow salsify and uh, start a fire that way with our dead lighter. I've got my uh, salsify. This is yellow. So I'm going to collect a few of those and a few dandelion heads and we'll get this uh, fire going in seconds. Put my cells free here. I'm going to put my dandelion at the bottom. Some dead grass on top. I almost need it to hold everything down now. Everything's blowing away. I'm just trying to get this done before the wind comes right up. There we go. Dead lighter. So you see how quick 
even with a dead lighter, you can uh, get a fire going. Now, you notice I did it in four stages. Dandelion at the bottom. Now, dandelion head, the seed pods, only burn for a fraction of a second. But it's very difficult to start the cells free with a lighter. It's a coarser um, seed and it's a lot more difficult to ignite with a dead lighter. So by layering it, the dandelion, for a split second, starts the goat's beard or cells free seed, which starts the grass, which starts the juniper. So by layering it like this, it's just a stage. One burns very quick, the next one burns a little longer and a little longer, and uh, you saw how quick that was. So that's another survival hack. Like I say, it only works when it's dry out or if you have these seeds available. But the more fire hacks you know, the better off you're going to be. So be careful with your fire, stay safe, and practice these hacks at home.